In this tutorial, I will be walking through the new DeepMotion Rotoscope Pose Editor. In a future update, we will dive more into the technology behind this tool. For this tutorial, we will be going over creating a new animation, accessing the new Pose Editor, review various settings, and providing some tips with how to edit the poses of your generated animations. First off, what is rotoscoping? Rotoscoping is a technique used by animators to trace over videos frame by frame to produce realistic action from static frames. The Deep Motion Rotoscope Pose Editor performs a similar function. It allows you to review your generated animation joint locations overlaid on your video and lets you move the joints in order to refine the location of any misplaced joints. Before we jump in, there are a few guidelines to make a note of. First, joint positions are placed into 3D space based on each frame and are confined to those trajectories meaning that you cannot freely edit joint positions within the 3D space and move them to spaces outside of their original intended locations. This will affect things like feet contact. You cannot edit the feet to hit the ground. This is going to make a bit more sense since we jump into the tool. Next, hand and foot rotations cannot be edited. And lastly, finger joints are not currently editable in order to further refine your hand tracking captures. However, this is something that may come at a later time. With these items in mind, let's go ahead and jump into editing and animation in the new editor. I will be turning this dance video into an animation. I have selected some initial settings. We have many videos on our YouTube channel that goes over what all of these settings do, but for brevity, I typically have the physics filter on anytime there's a chance the mesh might intersect with another part of the body. I'm also going to turn hand tracking on because I want to see those subtle hand motions. And I did run this already, so I do know that I want a little bit of motion smoothing as well, which will help iron out some of those jitters that you can get. So I'll turn that up to three as well. And great, it looks like we're time to process the animation. Um, this process should take, again, a few minutes, depending on your settings. If you have face tracking on, that can extend the time as well. So it really just depends on how long your video is going to be um, and what settings you have. Awesome. Okay, so reviewing this animation, I can see there are frames here where the arm gets a little bit lost um, due to the angle of the arm pointing backwards. Uh, the AI can't necessarily track that. Sometimes it'll lose it. And so... Um, the joint just kind of disappears there. Um, and so this is absolutely something that we can fix. I'm going to go ahead and outline some steps that you should take to help you go through the editing process as this tool can be a bit overwhelming um, upon first exploration. So for step one, what you're going to want to do is to identify the range of frames that you are going to want to edit. Um, you typically doing 10 to 20 frames at a time is recommended. Um, otherwise it gets to be uh, quite overwhelming if you have something that has like a thousand frames, let's say. So start small and um, just go from there. What I'd like to do is to go ahead and find the very first frame that I think I'm going to want to edit and leave it there. Because once you go into the editor, it'll automatically start on the frame that you are at in the previewer here. From here, you will have a straight on view of your joint positions overlaid on the frame of the video that you just generated. I'm going to pause here before I start editing my animation to go over the various UI elements so that you can better understand the different tools that you have at your disposal um, and it'll make the editing process go a lot quicker for you. Up here at the top, you have the back button that will take you back to the video player. We recently added a new auto save feature, so when you go back, it will automatically save your current progress. You will see an auto saving notification in the top left of your screen. Next, down here, any changes that you make in this editor must first be saved and animated before you can see your changes on your mesh character. Pressing the save and animate button will reprocess your entire animation with the changes you have made and then reload the previewer with your mesh character, allowing you to view the new animation results on your character. Keep this in mind if you have a longer video as processing times can directly correlate to how long your video is and what features you have turned on. And to save time, it might be worth it to trim your video down and work on just the rough parts of the animation, which is what I've done here, which is why my video is very short. Note that you can save and animate 
as many times as you want. This process is completely free for you to explore and refine your animations. Now moving on to some of the other tools, we have the pose quality indicator on the bottom left. The pose quality rates the quality of your subject's pose in each frame based on how realistic it would be for a human to perform the same pose. So the higher percentage means the more realistic the human pose is. The original score is your original animation score and current tells you the score taking your edits into account. This should help guide you when deciding how your edits are affecting your overall animation output. Next we have the view changer. As mentioned, this is the 2D planar view that you're looking at, but you can also view your skeleton in a 3D depth view. This allows you to view your entire character in 3D space and edit the joints accordingly. These white lines are the projection lines onto the frame of the video to approximate the character's joints. As mentioned during the guidelines at the beginning, the joints are bound to these camera projection lines and cannot be moved up or down here. This camera button here will reset your view. Sometimes you'll get lost somewhere off the screen, at least I do, <laughs> like this, and you can press the button to take you back. Uh, these buttons will allow you to go forward and backward um, one frame at a time. This button allows you to copy the joints of the current frame and then paste them to other frames. We just released the feature that allows you to copy and paste single joints or even multiple joint selections to other frames. Lastly, you'll see the undo and redo buttons that will undo or redo your actions. So this could be a joint motion or it could be a frame forward or backward. We just released this new joint interpolation feature. It allows you to fix large segments of frames where before you were only able to fix the motion frame by frame. To use this, First, select a joint you wish to fix, or multiple joints, since this works with our new multi-joint selection. Move it to its starting position, then click the Enter button to begin the interpolation process. Next, go to your end frame, where you want the edit to finish, select the end position of the same joint you had selected, and then click the check mark to close the loop. The end result should be a smooth motion from the first frame to the last frame you edited. You will typically need to use a bit of both the frame by frame editing and the interpolation feature to get the results you're looking for. Another new feature we added is the ability to change the rig's bone color. You can see the green can be hard to work with with a green background, so if I change it to an orange or blue, it has much better clarity for editing. Great, now that we have gone through the functionality of the rotoscope joint editor, let's go ahead and edit this animation. So for step three, you're going to want to start at the very beginning of the frame range that you chose to edit and start in the 2D viewfinder. Um, you're going to start with a 2D viewfinder um, all the way through uh, just to make sure everything is lining up or okay. And then we can go back through the 3D. Um, viewfinder to uh, edit any depth issues. I will be editing this animation using a variety of all the tools at my disposal, including the interpolation feature, frame by frame manual movement, and copy and paste. You are likely going to need to use all these features to get the end result you're looking for. So what I'm going to begin doing is to grab the elbow and wrist joints and move them back to their intended locations for a few frames to just untangle their locations a bit. You can um, grab this blue box and have free motion and move it wherever you want it to go. Okay, I see an opportunity here to use the interpolation feature since we now have a clear start and end position we'd like to, the joints to follow. Here, I'll select the elbow joint's start position, move it into place, then click the enter button to set the beginning interpolation frame. Then navigate to the last frame I'd like to end on Move the elbow joint to its correct location, then click the check mark to confirm the interpolated frames. Here, you can see there is definitely a smooth motion from the first location to the end location, but it takes a bit too much of a direct route. The elbow bends back a bit more. This did help iron out some of those kinks though. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the wrist joint to get it in a similar position that will make the editing process smoother. I think the wrist interpolation did a bit better of a job here, likely because there wasn't a bend in the joint like there was for the elbow. 
Now I'm just going to go back through and clean it up manually a little bit. Don't forget to use the hotkeys here for going forward and backward frames. It makes scrubbing and seeing the motion very convenient and fast. I'm going to repeat the process of interpolating batches of frames for smoother motion and then doing some light manual correction for the rest of my remaining frames. Okay, so that does it for the 2D view. Um, step four, we'll be now going back through um, and editing the 3D view. And so what I'm gonna do is just basically go into the 3D view and just work backwards from there and just make sure that um, the depth is looking, looks okay. Right, so here you can see that even though we have already edited the 2D view, the 3D view shows that the hand is a little bit too forward um, and my figure is definitely reaching backwards. And so this is where you can just go ahead and fix that and um, really add some more depth to your animation. Great, so now for step five, now that I am you know, relatively done. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and press that save and animate button. And from here, it's going to, again, reload your animation with these changes so that you can see it on your meshed character. Okay, so something else I'm seeing here now uh, is that the arm is intersecting with my mesh. Uh, I do have the physics filter turned on, which, you know, should solve some of those issues, but um, sometimes it just doesn't solve all of them. And so that is another great reason to use the rotoscope pose editor to fix issues like this. So let's go ahead and jump back in and fix that. So what I think needs to be done, I think the elbow, elbow joint needs to be pulled out a little bit and away from the body so it doesn't intersect the mesh. Um, and we're really not gonna be able to tell until we actually process it. So I'll just move it into where I think that it feels right. And you know, I think the 2D view already looks okay. Um, so that's an in this is an instance where the 2D view won't really help because it has to do with depth. And so that's what I'm gonna primarily use here. Okay, great, so I'm gonna go ahead and process this. Awesome, okay, so we have the final animation here where I was able to fix the issue of the arm going backwards as well as the arm intersecting into the mesh um, using the new rotoscope pose editor. So this tool is in a beta right now. Um, we have a ton of feature updates planned for it. Uh, so keep an eye out and definitely let us know what you guys think about it. Anything that you tell us, we will definitely take into consideration um, for any future updates. So let us know.